In this series, we're going to take a look at Port Swigger's newly implemented B Checks feature in Burp Suite, which allows us to make custom scan checks without having to make an actual Burp extension. So, as you can imagine, it's probably going to be quite handy. So, uh, before we look into developing custom B Checks, we're going to look at setting up our environment for running and evaluating the checks. You can find the B-Checks interface under Extensions and B-Checks, and you'll notice that I have a B-Check already that I have created. If you hit the New button, you can, of course, create custom ones based on templates that PortSugar has provided, and you can also import them from a file. In this case, we're not going to evaluate um, the actual logic of my current B-Check. We're just going to enable it. You'll notice by, <laughs> you'll note by its name, it's called robots.txt check, uh, so you should be able to... Uh, it should be clear that it's just looking for a robots.txt file, and uh, in particular, it's looking for it on a given host. So in order to be able to run this uh, B-check, all we need to do is enable it and then ensure that our scan configuration is properly configured such that it's including B-checks in audit items. And in particular, what I would like to do is I'd like to set up a scan such that only B-checks are run so that we can evaluate the B-check in isolation. And this is probably a really good practice to do if you are uh, developing uh, B-checks and or you just want to determine if a certain B-check works. So I'm going to go over to my repeater tab here. You'll see that I already have a request to my locally hosted instance of Juice Shop. And I'm going to right click and click scan here and I'm gonna click scan configuration and then uh, what I would like to do uh, is ideally just select from library uh, a configuration just for uh, B checks, which I already have made a uh, custom auditing rule for that, but I'm gonna show you how to uh, set that as well. In Burps, or sorry, in Port Swigger's tutorial video, they do reference an existing audit check option for running B checks only. That didn't appear in my list, so it wasn't clear whether it was intended to be built in or not. Um, this is the first uh, non-early adopters version of Burp to have B-Checks, so it's possible that they have uh, missed certain things when uh, deploying this version, and I'm sure we're going to see continuing improvements and uh, in features in the near future. Uh, but if you're wanting to create a new um, audit configuration or scan configuration in order to just isolate your B-Checks, you're going to want to click the new button here, and then you're going to want to go to issues reported, and here I'm going to select uh, the select individual issues. And if I scroll, I think it might be down at the bottom by default, and it is. So our B check generated issue is down at the bottom. I'm going to select everything else. So I'm going to click just above it. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to shift click, select all of those, right click, and click the enabled, which is going to disable all of those. And you'll see if I filter by enabled, we can see that only B check uh, generated issues are enabled here. Now there may be some other configuration options that you want to modify that are going to impact the outcome of your B checks. For example, you can configure B checks to run in the place of insertion points in your scans. And the configuration of your scan uh, will determine you know, where those insertion points are going to be set. Of course, we have options for those here, but I'm not going to uh, play around with any of those for uh, the purposes of this demonstration. I'm going to call this configuration testing B checks. And I'm going to click Save to Library, and that's going to persist this so that I can select it in the future, which makes it very easy to test B-Checks in the future. So I've saved that. I click OK. The scan should be started. So I go over here. You'll see it sent three requests. We can go and look at the logger for this, and we can see that it did make the robots.txt request that I wanted it to make. Uh, so it should have found this. And based on the logic of the rule, which we'll look at in another video, it should have populated an item uh, as an issue. And as you can see, it did right here. We can see that this issue was generated by the bcheck robots.txt, and it has identified the robots.txt file. So that's how you run a bcheck and set it up for uh, development in your environment. In subsequent videos, we're going to look at actually developing a variety of different uh, bchecks to accomplish different scan objectives.